Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Filming the Wild. Today, we're gonna to talk about the research phase of putting a film together. So if you haven't already seen my video on how to make a wildlife documentary, I suggest checking, it's gonna be somewhere up there above. Um, click on that, it kind of goes over all of my different seven phases of, of a wildlife documentary. Be kind of helpful. Um, but today again, we're gonna really focus on the research phase. Um, if you're new to this channel, uh, this film or this channel is dedicated to wildlife filmmaking, all the ins and outs, the behind the scenes, some of the short stories and films that I put together, um, and then of course more like how to's like this. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing. Um, would love to have you join me along on this journey um, as I go out and produce more films about wildlife. Um, and be sure to hit the like button as well. I always enjoy your engagement. And if anything catches your eye or interest in this, or you have questions, please be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. I always love hearing your feedback. Happy to answer any questions as well. Anyways, let's jump into this. But first, let's a little bit more about who I am and let's roll that intro. The cheesy part. And this is my world now. My name is Alan Lacey, and I'm a wildlife filmmaker, cameraman, and producer. Adventure with me as I explore the amazing world of nature and show you what it's like filming the wild. All right, so you have this kind of story or this concept that you've kind of been teasing in your mind. So how do you go about putting together this film? What, what's the research that you need to do to, to make this film happen? Um, so one of the biggest things I think for me in, in putting a film together is really focusing on the first part that's the most important part, and that is your story. Story is literally everything. All of your decisions from here on forward in the production process is gonna really key in and focus on your story. So ensuring that you can really research and get your story to the best it can possibly be is a very important part. Um, so there are like three things that I really kind of focus on when I'm developing my story. Um, the first one is kind of a, a question on, is this a character driven film? Am I working with people? Second is, is it gonna work with wildlife? Um, and if it's wildlife, is it strictly wildlife? Maybe it's not working with people, but we're working, focusing just strictly on the wildlife. And then location, where is this story taking place? So those, those three things I kind of really, I key in on. Now that, that first did, uh, the character part, um, who are your characters gonna be? So if you're telling a story, look at the potential people that are researching, let's say a certain species. So look at the biologists, the researchers, the folks on the ground doing the work. Um, and let's investigate who's got an interesting story, who's got something that can really contribute to the story that you're wanting to tell. So finding those people, kind of going down those internet rabbit holes and really focusing on uh, who can really pull that story out for you in a powerful way. So that's kind of like the first step that I kind of go through is if it's a character driven film is that. Um, sometimes you can do that with communities. Sometimes communities have a really cool story. If you're working with a specific uh, local group of people that have a really awesome um, influence on the, on the wildlife or maybe they have an interaction that's really interesting. Um, or sometimes it's personal stories. Like maybe there's someone who has just this insane connection to the land or to a very specific type of animal and they're just very passionate about it. So those are things to consider too. Um, if you're focusing strictly on the wildlife side of it, um, just no people, just strictly wildlife, it's, some, it's kind of what we call blue chip films, um, then in this, you really want to focus on a few things. And that's going to be the behavior, really understanding the behavior of the animal or the subject you're going to be filming. Um, so you're going to want to dive into understanding as much as possible about this species. Look at the research papers, um, find out what's new and innovative about this animal. Um, understand how this animal moves in the landscape. Are they nocturnal? Um, are they diurnal, maybe in the morning and the evening? Are they out during the day? These are all important things because it's like, how are you going to film them, right? So if it's a nocturnal animal, are you going to be able to use what kind of camera? Um, not many cameras are capable of filming at night. So you know, are you going to use infrared? Are you going to have to use lighting systems to do this? Um, those are all factors that kind of go into how you're going to tell that story effectively if it's an animal-based film. Um, and on top of that, knowing more about the animal um, also allows you to be able to really focus on how their relationship works with the land and the other species around it. So you can kind of follow along on this animal's life cycle, um, or if it's just this very small vignette, you can focus on whatever specific type of behavior you're looking to film. And that also helps too when you can actually understand more about their behavior how likely that behavior is going to occur, 
how you can best capture that behavior on film. So really diving into understanding as much as you can about that species is gonna be huge and extremely important because um, it's really gonna drive the rest of your story. Um, and then of course, you're gonna to wanna to figure out how to uh, be able to weave all that information you just gleaned into something that's actually interesting to watch, right? So um, sometimes it happens in the field as something really interesting develops in front of you. Other times you have to really think it out. So you're gonna to wanna to script it out and figure out how you're going to show how this type of species does whatever behavior you're looking to do. So you might have to do a little bit of thought process ahead of time on what's likely to take place. Another thing about that too is like, once you, you know the type of species you wanna work with, um, it, it kind of helps you know a little bit more about how you're gonna film it. So are you gonna use camera traps? You're gonna be able to use regular lenses or you need a, a telephoto zoom lens? Um, how close can you get to the animal? Um, is the animal skittish? Is it rare? Is it hard to find? Are they plentiful? Are they okay around people? These are all things that kind of like, you need to kind of understand a bit more about because um, it's gonna make the process of filming them that much easier. Um, even doesn't mean it's always easy. It can be extremely hard and challenging. Um, but in understanding as much as you can about them goes a tremendously long ways in how you put your story together. And last but not least, the location. So this is one of the more important elements too because your location also has a lot in how you tell your story. Um, so if it's a desert or a rainforest, is it local here? Is it far away? Is it abroad? Um, these all kind of go into figuring out the, the bigger scope of your story. So um, how does like, let's say a rainforest impact the story that you're trying to tell about maybe an endangered frog species or something like that? Does, does the area that the species lives in, how are you going to showcase the landscape? How are you going to um, really draw out the environment of either the people that are there or the wildlife that are there. So understanding that environment and the location is also a pretty important part. Um, and it's also awesome because people love beautiful landscape shots. So um, if you can really capture the beauty of the area, that's tremendous too. And how do you do that? And that's another important thing too, is to consider is like, what are you gonna do to capture that beauty? When are you gonna go? What time of year? What time of seasons? Those are important things to consider as you develop your story. All right, and moving on, the next important thing is what we call character development. So you've kind of focused on whether you're working with people or animals and what location you're gonna be in. So, I mean, characters can be more than just people, right? It can be animals too. So you're gonna take your character and you wanna be able to develop them throughout the course of your story. So if it's people, uh, let's say it's a researcher or something, and this researcher has been asking maybe a specific question and um, they're trying to understand more about it in their research. So you can develop how this biologist or researcher is tackling this question, show the trials they go through throughout the film, and then towards the end of the film, they get the resolution, they understand more about the species, maybe the question they've been asking comes true. Um, so taking that uh, viewer through that journey as this character develops throughout the course of the film is an important thing. In wildlife, you gotta be able to do the same thing. So looking at, if you're really focusing on a story on a very specific species, how are you gonna be able to do character development with that species? What potential trials do they face? Is it hunting? Is it getting enough food? Is it uh, looking for water? You know, how, what kind of um, environmental stressors might you put into the film that actually do exist in the wild, of course. You don't wanna ever fabricate stuff that isn't true um, or accurate to the story, but how do you be able to take this, this specific animal and take them on a journey as well so that the viewer can really appreciate the hardships of living as a wild animal, for example. So think about character development, it's a really important part. Um, and it also kind of goes into a little bit more about the scope of the film. What's it gonna take to actually produce it? because it might involve a lot of time in the field, a lot of time investment there, um, or maybe it's something that you can accomplish in a weekend. So it really kind of uh, helps you understand more about how you're gonna tell your story. All right, so as you're developing your story, another really important thing to always kind of consider um, as you are putting your story together, so as you're thinking of character development and all those different things, um, is who your audience is. Who are you gonna connect with? Who is gonna see this film? Um, these are really important questions to keep asking yourself as you're putting together the storyline, as you're really considering how you're going to tell the story. Because 
if you're trying to tell a story about, um, I don't know, let's say wildlife trafficking and the issues and the poaching of like sun bears or something like that, are you going to try to tell the story to people based here in the United States, into Europe, so they can feel more compassion and what they can do to maybe help support the efforts to how to, to reduce that? Or is, or is maybe your film really focused on getting out to the local people in the community over there in Borneo and places like that, that can help them understand the problem to educate them more so that, you know, the ones that are actually out there doing that maybe won't do that in the future. Like who is your audience? Or maybe it's kids, you know, maybe you're looking at producing films specifically related to kids, adults, um, you know, is it, is it a story that's more geared to maybe try to change a political climate, for example? Um, so maybe it's more geared towards like the political minded folks um, politicians or something. Um, who is your audience? Um, and that also ties into another thing as far as your audience is concerned. And it's a, kind of the, one of the last stages of the film, but you need to be thinking about those last stages at the beginning, and that's your distribution, right? So where is this film going to live? Is it going to be an online platform? Is it going to be, are you going to release it independently? Are you going to work on trying to eventually get this film uh, pitched and maybe bought by a network, um, potentially for broadcast? Is it gonna live on like YouTube for free? Um, are you looking at different online video on demand services? Um, so those are also very important things and really wrestling and understanding who your audience is, is gonna help you be able to pitch your film and your idea to those various entities like that. So really understanding your audience and letting that kind of drive how you put your story together is also extremely important and critical. Um, and because any, any of those entities are going to really want to understand who your audience is, who you're, and what story are you trying to tell, right? So those are really big, important uh, elements and factors as you consider and as you do your research in putting the film together. All right, and so in kind of the last phase of the research that you're going to be doing, um, and I kind of do this, yeah, I kind of do this throughout, but uh, I decided to put it at the end here because I guess it's a good way to look at it. Once you've done a lot of your research and you've figured out the type of story you're going to tell, if it's people, animals, et cetera, et cetera, um, and that's the scope of your film, the scope of the entire project. Um, we're not going to really focus on the budgeting part right now because we're going to talk about that in an, in an upcoming video, um, but really kind of you can kind of get an idea of what the whole scope is based on the research you've done. So you can kind of see, all right, this is going to be a simple little project. We're going to do it on the weekend. It's going to be a small budget. Okay, cool. It's going to be local. We understand that it's not going to be a lot involved in that, but let's say it's a lot bigger, right? So maybe it involves traveling overseas, getting a potential work visa to work in a various country if you're going to do film or a filming visa. Um, and maybe it requires, you know, obviously getting a lot of permits and fees from the local places, whether it's like a, a like they're similar like a National Park Service, but maybe a, a working um, with a safari company, getting lodging and all that booked. That can be very expensive. We're talking in the tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, um, depending on where you're going, of course. Um, so, and then if you have crew, are you doing it yourself? Are you going to be working with a larger crew? Like the scale of your production is also something really to consider. Um, and understanding more about like everything that's going to be involved in the entire production process. So really understanding the scope of your film is an important part. And your story is going to kind of drive and dictate that. So if you're really wanting to, to focus on a, on a very intricately told story that requires a ton of time investment in the field, it's going to require multiple shoots. Um, those multiple shoots also add up, especially if it's in, lo in remote and distant locations. Um, just really consider all of those little elements and those little factors that can kind of really drive the feasibility of your story. So uh, once you kind of have a grasp of that, um, you'll move on to the next steps, but um, the feasibility is a big part. So that's kind of where at the end of the development and research phase, I kind of look at the whole story um, the whole package at this point. And I look at it and I go, is this something feasible? Is this something I can accomplish? Um, is it going to require you know, doing a lot of work to figure out how am I going to get the funding for it? If it's something that I have funding for already that's a smaller budget, you know, how am I going to be able to actually make this project happen? So the feasibility is where that comes in. Um, once you've kind of got all the little components put together, then it's the fun part, you know, how do we make this happen? All right, guys, that is pretty much it in a nutshell, honestly. Can't really think of a whole lot more. Um, so when it comes to the research and the development phase of your film, really focus on the story. 
Story is everything. Really do the research and figure out who your characters are gonna be. How are you gonna do the character development? What story? How are you gonna really showcase this character moving through your film? And don't forget, audience is important. Keep that in mind throughout this whole process. Your audience is everything. Who's gonna see it and where's this film gonna live? Once you understand all those elements, you can kind of look at the broader scope and you can understand, is this film possible? Does it make, take a little more development? Is it not? Is it gonna be greenlit? Yeah, the feasibility, right? Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Always enjoy your interaction in these films. Um, and if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing because I've got a lot more content like this kind of headed your way. This is part one in a seven part series on how to make a wildlife documentary and really focusing on like wildlife filmmaking one-on-one. Um, so if you're interested in that and would like to join me on this journey, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on that bell so you're notified of any of my upcoming videos. Um, so anyways, I look forward to catching you guys on the next one. So keep an eye out for the next episode of Filming the Wild. <laughs>